Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with a gameplay overview for Hawked. Straight away, we're starting with the customization. The game already has a large variety and collection of looks, appearances, items, and camos. There is no doubt there will be added skins, everything like that, which make it a lot more enjoyable, so you can kind of have a unique and customized avatar. There is definitely one thing that I love already, is the fact that there's a lot of variety, and the game's only in beta, and it's not even started yet. Now, just to make you fully aware, I attained all of this footage in the pre-beta, okay? So there might have been some changes since, or there might be some differences, but all in all, it's a fun game. Now to the Rift Wake. So this is the holding area. You can climb, accept quests, dance, chill out, or you can go into the firing range. Hint, hint. And also this is where you queue for games. So the firing range. Now this is something I absolutely love about this game. So it's plain and simple, okay? It's like in Apex. A firing range where you just shoot and practice your weapons but that's so much more important than people realize I didn't have a clue what gun did what how they fired or how to even fire so it was a perfect opportunity for me to jump in and kind of practice you know like I said no clue what gun to pick how they fired and if they fired do they charge up or do they do anything at all because some of these guns actually don't do any damage now, it was great, you know, which ones had big recall, which ones had high damage, which ones were fun. Um, but there's one thing I definitely can say, there's lots of variety in gun styles. And as mentioned in the last video, there's lots of mannequins in the firing range. So you can get real good practice for your firing ranges and for, you know, kind of getting your eye in and practicing. Right, moving on from the firing range, here we jump into the Exiles, and the first section I'll be discussing with you guys is looting. Okay. When looking in game, you need to look for the simple gun symbol, okay, as you can see on the screen. The looting is very simple, like in every other game that involves looting, okay? Hold a button to loot. So hold down E, and that opens the loot caches or the chests or whatever you want to call them okay they are boxes that you look like you step on and then they just fold open okay the ammunition is also collected from the little boxes with like the yellow tape or paint on them and this is com collected automatically you get a variety of looting ranging from weapons tacticals, lethal equipment, and also perks. Right, swiftly moving on to glyphs and puzzles. Glyphs and puzzles are the main component to the game, okay? Personally, I'm a huge fan of this concept and the idea. It's fun, it's engaging, and although they aren't complicated, they do give you a sense of focus and something to aim for instead of just running around looting aimlessly and then slaying everyone else in the lobby. I previously mentioned how I felt these puzzles were great for like an aim trainer, because as you can see here, I actually missed a couple of my shots, um, but they're really, really good, and they're a brilliant way to practice. Some of these glyphs are protected by PvE mobs and others are guarded by simple puzzles like you can see here. They can be distracting and maybe mean you get attacked by PvP players, but then again, that's the whole point of the game, that's the whole style of the game, and you need to get used to it because if you're going to get involved in the Exiles and play Hawked, then PvP is a huge component. Ooh. 
And swiftly moving on to, as I mentioned, PvP. Now, for me, PvP is such a complicated aspect of a game to get right. Too much learning makes the skill gap super huge, and too little means anyone can clap anyone's cheeks, basically. But this game, you've got to have a good element and understanding of the skills, mobility, I think it really means that the game's going in a good direction. With this looter shooter extraction game, you could do nothing all game and just wait for the enemies to loot the artifact and chase them until you get them. Very much like a famous man once said, you will never get this, you will never get this, and then at the game, at the end of the game, you get this. Simple and easy concept, if you ask me. The audio is a huge part in the game. Most games, when it comes to third partying, I feel is a bit of a, you know, tricky situation. But I feel that with these guys, they've got it just right. The audio doesn't travel a crazy distance, but there's still enough audio so that if you are in the local area or other players are fighting each other or in-game mobs, then you can swoop in and farm up the XP points. Also, the fact that the characters glow red, I love this. Absolutely love that. That's such an incredible feature. And finally, another one that I really like is your character will often say enemy in the local area or there's an enemy nearby or I think there's an enemy nearby. And that is something which is brilliant because then you can really fix up look sharp. PvE. Now, following on for the PvP, we've got some pretty cool features regarding the PvE elements. Firstly, you've got these gemstone spinny things, which if you shoot the top of them, they actually do damage and they spin around and they fuck shit up, if you pardon my French. Um, kills lots of stuff, even damages PvP players. Um, as you've probably noticed, there's lots of little cool traps, and this is clearly a cool trap that is in place to, you know, as I said earlier, fuck shit up. Then we have the camps. So the camps is kind of where you look for the gear or you look for loot. And you also have the bigger camps, which is where you have glyphs and these are stored. And once you kill all the enemies in the surrounding area or the PvE environment part of the camp, you can then loot the glyph. PvE camps can be attacked at the start with your slingshot in order to get loot and guns. So this can help you start your pursuit of the glyphs and artifacts. And finally, traps are based in the temple where artifacts are located. So please be aware, unlike certain teammates, there aren't just one type of trap. There are spikes on the floor. There are arrows from the wall. You know, Indiana Jones kind of traps. Now, movement. Holy Christ, I love the movement in this game. High mobility is so fun. Surfboards, which make you travel fast, pole vaulting over objects, zip lining, cool climbing. What more could you need and want? You can even slide along. Very enjoyable. Makes the PvP combat system more enjoyable and makes traveling across the map so much more, more enjoyable. And you're probably thinking, oh, why is he getting excited over movement? But it's such a hard thing to get right, and it looks like they're getting it right. In-game events. Now, I didn't get a chance to do one of these in-game when I played the pre-beta, but since playing in the beta, I actually have had a chance to do these. Uh, I think they were a really, really, really cool idea. Um, I've actually extracted three artifacts in a game once. I've killed two in-game events or caravans, and 
Let me tell you now, lots of fun, loads of great loot, and it's a really good idea if you're a big pvp -er as well because you can get involved and there's always people going for the artifact or going for the loot now it is a high quality area like in apex so it's a, it's a zone of high value so do expect lots of hostiles and lots of enemies I have also been told that these events will come into play as the game progresses. So do watch out. They don't always start in the game. They do appear a little bit later on. And they will be changed as the game progresses. Artifacts are the main and sole purpose of this game. It isn't just about killing others, killing lizards and doing puzzles. It's also that you can extract the crown jewels. Okay? Extract... The crown jewels without this you can't extract well you can extract but you don't win you just leave the game with your loot it's a must no brainer okay once you tame this bad boy all other players will be able to see you on the map as you head to the extraction point so do remember you can be caught out you can be seen but if you're a good pumper you're a big pumper you will be able to be fine. I've extracted with the crown jewels many times. As I said earlier, I've even got the artifact from the in-game event and extracted that first and then gone for the final extraction. And last but not least, extractions. The final component of the game. This is escaping. This is leaving the exiles with or without the crown jewels, which is obviously the artifact or the artifacts, plural. A simple thing to do and easily achieved. Just walk over to the extraction point and stand in the circle whilst you extract or do like me. And you can dance with the devil, which means being shot at and kind of jumping around so that you know people don't kill me as i'm trying to extract you'll see once you extract this is uh you and your team followed by match summary followed by scoreboard now, guys, I hope you liked my in-depth game review and breakdown. Very different to the other video, but this one gives you a lot more information and more footage to help guide you and teach you about the Exiles. Now, guys, nothing else much to say apart from good luck, Renegades. See you soon, and hopefully I'll see you on the Twitch channel very soon, either with drops or without drops. And guys... Best of luck in the Exiles. Good luck, Renegades.